This video breaks down the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium equations, an idea coined by a British mathematician and German physician who developed it. So populations that are not evolving are said to be in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, which I often abbreviate as HW. Under Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, the allele frequencies and genotype frequencies within a population remain constant from generation to generation. Allele frequency refers to how prevalent a particular allele for a specific gene locus is within a population. So we're going to learn two equations in the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Uh, the first one has two variables. Lowercase p represents the frequency of the dominant allele. Remember that dominant alleles are usually represented by uppercase letters like big A. Lowercase q represent the frequency of the recessive allele. Remember, recessive alleles are often represented by lowercase letters like lowercase a. And in any population, when you add p and q, that should always equal one. One cute way to remember that p always represents the dominant allele is that if you write down a letter p and then you flip it upside down, it forms a d for dominant. Genotype frequency refers to how prevalent a particular genotype for a specific gene locus is within a population. For diploid organisms, we'll only use diploid organisms with these, with these equations, each individual has two alleles at each gene locus. So their genotype is made of two alleles. This next equation represents genotype frequencies. P squared represents the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype, like the genotype big A, big A. Q squared represents the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype, like the genotype little a, little a. 2PQ represents the frequency of the heterozygous genotype, like the genotype big A, little a. In any population, when you add all these three terms up for genotype frequencies, you should get the number 1. So P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. Now let's try an example. Let's say we have a population of wildflowers that is incompletely dominant for color. So red is incompletely dominant to white. The red allele is represented by CR and the white allele is represented by CW. There are 320 red flowers, 160 pink flowers, and 20 white flowers. Now these all represent phenotypes. It would be helpful to write out the genotypes for all of these phenotypes. Red is incompletely dominant, so red flowers should have the genotype CRCR. Pink flowers uh, have the heterozygous genotype, so they should have the genotype CRCW. And white flowers uh, should have the genotype CWCW. They are homozygous recessive. If I asked you how many alleles in total are there in this population, you should first count up the total number of individuals in the population. So 320 plus 160 plus 20 equals 500. That's the total number of individuals. And remember that these individual flowers are all diploid. And diploid individuals have two copies of each allele. So you multiply by this by two, and so there are 1,000 alleles total. Next, I'm asking, what is the observed frequency of the dominant allele, CR? I'm basically asking, what is P? P represents the frequency of the dominant allele. So first, you need to determine the number of CR alleles that exist in this population. Looking at the totals above, each of the 320 red flowers have two copies of the CR allele. So you want to add 320 with 320. Then you want to count the alleles in the pink flowers. So there are 160 pink flowers. They all have one copy of the CR allele. So you then you want to add 160. So 320 plus 320 plus 160 gives you 800. Now, don't stop at the 800. That's just the number of the CR alleles in this population. We want to know the frequency. To determine frequency, you want to divide the, number, the total number of alleles you just calculated by the total number of alleles in the population. So 800 divided by 1,000 equals 0 0.8. Just a little side note, just by calculating P, you can automatically calculate Q. Remember that first Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium equation is P plus Q equals 1. And so if you plug in 0 0.8 for P uh, plus Q equals 1, you can solve that Q equals 0 0.2. But just for fun, let's solve for Q similar to the way we just solved for P. So let's say I ask, what is the observed frequency of the recessive allele CW? In other words, what is Q? 
So the 20 white flowers have two copies of the CW allele. So you want to add 20 plus 20. And then the pink flowers have one copy of the CW allele. So you want to add 160. The red flowers do not have any copies of the CW allele, so we don't add any of them. 20 plus 20 plus 160 gives you 200. Remember, 200 is just the number of the CW alleles. It's not the frequency. To calculate the frequency, you want to divide 200 by the total number of alleles in the population. So 200 divided by 1,000 gives you 0 0.2. If we know the observed allele frequencies and the population is not evolving, meaning that it is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, then we can use that, that second equation to calculate the expected genotype frequencies for future generations. We'll use the same wildflower population where P equals 0 0.8 and Q equals 0 0.2. Let's solve this question. What is the expected frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype? In other words, what is the expected frequency of CRCR or P squared? P squared means P times P, so 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 equals 0 0.64. Try solving this next question. What is the expected frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype? This is basically asking, what is the expected frequency of CWCW? Or what is Q squared? So Q times Q or 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 equals 0 0.04. Next, what is the expected frequency of the heterozygous genotype? In other words, what is the expected frequency of CRCW? In other words, what is 2PQ? So to solve for 2PQ, you multiply 2 times P. Oh, oh no, oh, ooh. We're just going to put a sticker on that. Yep, just like that. Okay, moving on. To solve for 2PQ, you multiply 2 times p times q, or 2 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.2, and you get 0 0.32. Remember that second equation, p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1? Well, we can add up all of these numbers, and we should get 1, and that's one way to sort of double check your answers. So 0 0.64 plus 0.32 plus 0 0.04 equals 1. We can use expected genotype frequencies to make predictions about a population that is not evolving. So using the same wildflower, wildflower population where P squared was 0 0.64, Q squared was 0 0.04, and 2PQ was 0 0.32, let's solve the following questions. Suppose after several generations, the wildflower population is made up of 1,500 individuals and it is not evolving. How many of these individuals are expected to be red? Remember that having the phenotype red means that a flower must be homozygous dominant. To solve this question, you will multiply the frequency by the total number of individuals in the population. So the frequency of being homozygous dominant is 0 0.64. Multiply it by 1,500 gives you 960 individuals. Try solving the next few uh, before I solve them. How many are expected to be white? Remember to be white, a flower has to be homozygous recessive. Just like we did above, we'll multiply the frequency of the homozygous recessive individuals, 0 0.04, times the total number of individuals, 1,500, and that gives you 60 individuals. And lastly, how many are expected to be pink? To be pink, the flower would have to be heterozygous. Here, we multiply 0 0.32 times 1,500, and we get 480 individuals. If you want to double check your work, the total number of individuals here when you add them up should equal 1500. So 960 plus 60 plus 480 equals 1500. If, if the observed genetic makeup of the population differs from the expectations under Hardy-Weinberg, that suggests that the population may be evolving.